Good evening and welcome to this special edition of Sports Monday. I am Paul Lopez. Belize hosted the 8th Central American Cricket Championship Tournament over the weekend. The four-day event saw teams from Belize, Costa Rica, Mexico and London battle it out. On Thursday morning, the action began in Bermudian Landing, where the Belize National Cricket B team faced off against the Marleybone Cricket Club, MCC, out of London. MCC was first to bat, while Team Belize fielded in this T20 match. At the end of the first half, MCC had scored 194 runs. After Belize's B team completed 20 overs, it only managed to score 58 points giving the more experienced MCC the victory in that match. In the second game of the day, it was Belize National Cricket A team up against MCC. Team Belize was first up to bat. At the end of the first 20 overs, Belize scored 92 runs. Belize's A team gave MCC its greatest challenge on this day. However, MCC was able to score 97 runs in 20 overs, defeating Belize by only 5 runs. On Friday morning, the action moved over to the Lord's Bank Cricket Grounds, where Belize's B team went up against Costa Rica. Team Costa Rica was first up to bat. At the close of 20 overs, they were able to put 111 runs on the scoreboard. During their round of batting, Belize's B team showed tact and skills as they played their way to a victorious finish over Costa Rica. Belize's A team also defeated Costa Rica that same day. 73 to 69 runs. On Sunday, Belize's A team took on Mexico for a chance at the finals against the tournament's undefeated MCC. Mexico was first to bat. At the end of the overs, they secured a total of 84 runs. Team Belize only needed 85 runs to defeat Mexico and to make it to the finals. But Belize was unable to outscore Mexico, finishing the match with 63 runs. The final matchup between MCC and Mexico ended in favor of MCC, making the Marleybone Cricket Club the official champions of the 8th Central American Cricket Championship Tournament held right here in Belize. We were undefeated, but as we spoke about, um, the Belize guys schooled us in the first practice game, and we learned a huge amount from that. So okay. by, by being able to, to get used to the conditions at least a little bit and, and, know, and start to know what to expect, that really sort of set things up nicely for us, to be honest. I am extremely happy to have been a part of this tournament. Um, I know we prepared for weeks before this, and we're now at the end. I was hoping that one of the Belize team would have been victorious after this weekend. But it did not happen. But I'm happy. I'm, I want to congratulate MCC and Mexico for, for being our champion and sub-champions. We would like to say a huge shout out to RY Productions for bringing all of Belize's matches and the final match live on social media. And from cricket, we move over to some cycling action. A delegation of Belizean cyclists traveled to Cozumel, Mexico to compete in the Cedral Classic 2023. Among the Belizean riders were heavy hitters like Ray Catus, who have been riding this race in Mexico for the past three decades. But the big story coming out of this event is all about his daughter, Kaya Catus, an elite cyclist who rides professionally in the U.S. and her historic feat. Over a decade ago, Kaya followed in the footsteps of her father and began riding the Classic. Over the weekend, she secured her 10th consecutive win in the Classic making her the first cyclist to do so. We spoke with her about the accomplishment. Winning a race one time is a huge accomplishment, let alone 10. Um, I've been traveling to Mexico with my father um, as a child before I even started to race. And this race in Cozumel actually was one of the first races um, he started to take me to do back in uh, 2012. And um, from then until now, I've been winning. Yes. Let's talk about some of the unique features about this race when compared to, for example, uh, racing at the cross country in Belize. Um, well, it is a road race. It's a bit shorter than the cross country. It's 46 miles. However, um, the thing in Cozumel is, is the winds. Because it's an island and you race along the, the seaside, the cross winds are brutal. Right. And um, that is what makes the race really hard. No. Um you stood on the podium there for first place for the 10th time. Uh, 
what was that experience like for you and does it ever get old or boring standing on the podium at first place? <laughs> it never does. I mean, every victory is sweet because to everyone, um, you know, you really need to put in the work. Earlier this year, I, I suffered. Um, I was in an accident at the end of February. Um, you know, I had a serious injury. I had fractured some ribs and, um, you know, it, it, it really held me back, held my condition back. And, um, you know, that was seen in the cross country this year. Um, I'm still in recovery mode. However, um, this is a part of what sport is about. You know, it's, it's, it's the passion, the de determination to set goals and accomplish them all the time. Um, injuries are set back, but uh, you have to push your body and, and push yourself to, you know, get through these things. Huge congratulations to Kaya Katus, who continues to excel in her discipline. She's preparing to race in the U.S. shortly alongside her L.A. Sweat teammates. The Belize Under-15 Boys National Team has been in Costa Rica competing in the UNCA FIFA Forward U15 Boys Tournament. On Friday, Team Belize took on Guatemala. After 90 minutes of playtime, Belize lost the match one goal to four. And then on Sunday, Belize was back out on the field to take on Honduras. That game ended in favor of Honduras, seven goals to zero. And this morning, Belize took on Panama in its final matchup of the tournament. Panama dominated in that match. They scored 11 goals, while Team Belize secured two goals. Notwithstanding the loss, here's a look at those two goals scored. And finally for tonight's coverage, the Belize Elite Basketball League's highly anticipated rematch between the Belize City Defenders and the Bennett's Belize Hurricanes took place on Friday night inside the Belize City Civic Center. It was a showdown for the books before a sold-out Civic. The face-off was physical and nail-biting all the way down to the last minute of the fourth quarter. But when all was said and done, the Hurricanes defeated their city rivals 73 to 65. The Hurricanes are now at the number one spot. The Dangriga Dream Ballers currently sits at number two after winning by default over the Punta Gorda Panthers. Orange Walk Running Rebels holds the number three seat following their victory over the San Pedro Tiger Sharks. Well folks, that's all we have for you in tonight's coverage of Sports Monday. Until next time, be mindful that nature is the best playground. Go out and have some fun.